I'm Larry Cole and this is Torchbearers. Hey folks, I just want to thank you for downloading our podcast, checking out our YouTube videos, um, going to our website, and I want to thank you for the invitations that we have received uh, to minister to uh, congregations, to ministry leaders, and to just good folks that love the Lord. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I want to talk today about the kingdom. So in the scripture, the kingdom is described in two different ways. Uh, number one is the kingdom of heaven. It's interesting in the book of Matthew, Matthew only mentions the kingdom as the kingdom of heaven. He never mentions the kingdom of God. Um, where the kingdom of God is talked about, for example, Jesus says the kingdom is within you and he's referring to the kingdom of God. Jesus' disciples were expecting the Messiah to come to set up his throne in Jerusalem. Um, they were probably expecting that Israel would raise up an army and defeat uh, Rome and push them out of Israel and that Israel would be able to go back to the ways that they were in the days of the prophets. Uh, but Jesus had other plans. His kingdom is not of this world, but he still has a kingdom because he is king. So the kingdom of heaven versus the kingdom of God. So what's the difference between the two? The kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are both geographical locations. The difference being one is positioned in heaven and the other one on earth. Again, the book of Matthew only mentions the kingdom of heaven. So every time Matthew mentions the kingdom in his, in his gospel, he's talking about a geographical location, the kingdom of heaven, and that's where God's throne is, that's where Jesus is now after his ascension, and that's, that's heaven. The kingdom of God um, is another geographical location, and it's on the earth. So in the book of John, Jesus' disciples came to him and said, uh, Lord, when are you going to set up your kingdom? When are we going to see you take your throne? We know that you're the Messiah. We know that God has sent you here and we are just ready for you to take your throne, be crowned as king, and we're going to raise up an army. We're going to push Rome out of Israel uh, the way that God did in, in the Old Testament times and we're going to see your kingdom established. Uh, but Jesus had other plans. Uh, his kingdom is not of this world, and he told them, if you want to know where the kingdom is, the kingdom of God is within you. So there's two geographical locations, heaven and earth. In heaven is the kingdom of heaven, and that's where God's throne is. On earth is the kingdom of God and it's within every believer. God has blessed us. He has given us every tool, um, everything that we need to be overcomers in these last days. Um, we have the Holy Spirit of God living within us. This is the Holy Spirit that, that God breathed out upon a dark, void, formless earth at creation. And the Holy Spirit was so powerful that He took the Word and made it into the earth uh, in its in its most um, beautiful state, uh, it was just totally untouched by by darkness. It was just a glorious creation. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon the Virgin Mary, and she was able to conceive. This is the creative power of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit lives within those who believe in Jesus Christ, those who have called upon His name, those who have been washed in His blood, born by His Spirit, those who have received the circumcision of their heart, and they've become children of God. The Holy Spirit lives within you. In addition to His Spirit, God has given us His Word. His Word is coming into our spirits and feeding us. His Word is coming into our minds and giving us the minds of Christ. Uh, His Word is coming into our hearts and, and transforming us into the image of Christ. And the third thing within us is the Kingdom, the Kingdom of God. So I want to talk to you today about the Kingdom. How do we establish the kingdom within us? How do we strengthen the kingdom within us? How do we enlarge it, increase it, and, and make a firm foundation for the kingdom? Alright, so we have access to heaven through the blood of Jesus Christ. 
We have access to the Father. We have access to, to places where we are seated in heaven. This is all because of what Jesus did on the earth. It's totally by what he did. It's not by my works. It's not by my righteousness, but it's by what he accomplished in his life of, of purity, holiness, righteousness, and his sacrifice upon the cross. And the power of the Holy Spirit that raised him from the dead, by all this, we have access to heavenly places. So in worship, we enter into those heavenly places. Our physical bodies don't go there, our souls may not go there, but our spirits, which are, are containing the Holy Spirit of God, are able to be released from this earth and enter into heavenly places. This is not some spooky, charismatic teaching. This is scripture, that we are seated in heavenly places, as Paul wrote about in the book of Ephesians. We get there through worship. If your worship is not causing your spirit to soar, if, it's, if your worship is not allowing you to rise above the, the struggles, the turmoil, the chaos, the worries and concerns of this earth, if your worship is not taking you above all those things, then those things are holding you bound and holding you back. So the scripture says that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. God does not want you to carry these heavy burdens upon you. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So friend, I challenge people all the time. You've got to worship violently. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven suffers violent. And those who are violent take it by force. This is not us intruding or breaking into God's house, but this is taking our rightful place that God has promised us. God promised us, you can come to me through my son Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way to the Father. So you have access to these places. The enemy, Satan, and his, his demonic forces will come against us and try to prevent us from getting into those heavenly places, to prevent us from worshiping in spirit and in truth. But friend, we've got to rise up in the authority of Jesus Christ, humble ourselves to Him. It's not my authority, it's His authority that He has given to me. And the only way I can walk in His authority is by humbling myself to Him. So as I humble myself to Jesus, I'm able to enter into His authority. I'm able to worship in spirit and in truth. So when, when the things of this world, the cares of this world, when the attacks of the enemy, when the, the lies of, of the deceiver come against us, the only way they can get to us is through our bodies and through our souls. The devil cannot touch our spirit. That's why God is seeking those, as Jesus told the woman at the well, He is seeking those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. My body can express my worship, my soul can express my worship, but true worship can only come from my spirit. And it's my spirit in, in worshiping in this place that sets me free, that takes me beyond the gravitational pull of darkness on this earth. So we have got to take heaven by force. Trust me, if you humble yourself and you sanctify and lift up the name of Jesus and begin to worship him, God is not going to be threatened. He is not going to be offended. He's not going to be angry because you worship him violently. He is inviting you to come to him. And we have to overcome the obstacles of this world that are keeping us from getting to him. When we enter into this place of worship, we are entering into the kingdom of heaven. And friend, there is nothing that we can do more that is, that is more important than being in the kingdom of heaven, entering into that place through worship and abiding with our Father, sitting before Him, waiting upon Him. It is those who wait upon the Lord that renew their strength. 
So a lot of people think that just sitting in silence is waiting upon the Lord. It's not sitting in silence, it's sitting in His presence. Silence didn't die for you. Silence did not create you. Silence did, did not uh, shed its blood for you, but God did. So it's getting into His presence and then waiting upon the Lord. And if we get into His presence, if we overcome the pull of the chaos and turmoil of this world and get into His presence and then wait upon Him in silence, then He will renew our strength. We will then mount up with wings as eagles and we will soar into higher places of authority. But it only comes as we submit to Him and worship Him in spirit and in truth. So the more time that I spend in the kingdom of heaven, the more the kingdom of God becomes established within me. So as I worship in spirit and in truth, I'm gaining the authority to enter into heavenly places, the places where my Father dwells, the places where Jesus dwells. I'm entering into these places. As I spend more time in those places, the kingdom of God within me is being firmed up. It's being confirmed. It's being more uh, solidly established. And this determines the authority that I have on the earth. Jesus said to his disciples, all authority has been given unto me. It has. It's been given unto him. It wasn't just given unto him because of, of who he was, but mostly because of what he did. He learned obedience through the things that he suffered. So throughout Jesus' life, he suffered just like we do. He had people come against him. He was constantly falsely accused. He constantly had people trying to, to trap him. But he humbled himself and kept his eyes on the Father, kept his heart filled with the love of the Father. And, and he learned how not to grieve the Holy Spirit, how not to quench the Holy Spirit. And therefore, he was constantly abiding in the presence of God. This is where he lived. And as a result, he learned obedience. He learned how when things got hard, how when multitudes were coming against him, he learned how to keep his mind um, on the Lord. He learned how to keep his heart on the Lord. He learned how to keep the reins on his tongue, on his words, on his, on his fleshly reactions. He, he learned to walk in this discipline of obedience. And as a result of that, the Father gave him authority on the earth. So what Jesus was doing was he was keeping his eyes on the kingdom of heaven where his Father's throne was. And as a result, through humility, through obedience, through discipline, he was more firmly establishing the kingdom of God within himself. And Jesus did this to set the pattern for us to do the same thing. If we want the kingdom of God to be firmly established within us, we have to enter into the kingdom of heaven and enter into it often and stay there for, for hours per day. As a result, this kingdom is established within us, the kingdom of God, and as a result, we then have authority upon the earth. Friends, a lot of people say, well, because Jesus died, uh, I have authority. Well, no, because Jesus died, he has authority. But also because he died, you have access to that authority. So it's not just a given because Jesus carried his cross. Jesus carried his cross, so now we can be empowered to carry ours. So there's a dependency upon His cross that then allows us to carry ours. As we carry our cross, as we let the chaos and the turmoil of this earth crucify our flesh, our souls learn to be disciplined and to walk into obedience, and our spirits learn to walk in freedom. 
So the kingdom of heaven is what establishes the kingdom of God within us. And, and we will then see ourselves and the church at large, as we walk through this pattern, walk in more authority upon the earth. Friends, for the most part, the church is being pushed around. The church has this false identity, this substitute identity of being weak, of being a doormat that the world is supposed to be allowed to, to walk upon. There are times to let the world have its way with us. There were times that Jesus humbled himself and he didn't fight back. He didn't uh, make an argument for himself. But there were other times when he stood in his authority and he declared the word of God with that authority and people recognized it and demons fled from him because of it. And as we gain vision, which is the number one priority of, of what Torchbearers is wanting to help us establish within our lives, as we gain more vision, we're going to gain the discernment of when to rise up and fight, when to, to um, humble ourselves to a fight. As a prime example, a lot of people right now are rebelling against having to wear a mask in public places. Friends, this is not a time for rebellion. Just put on your mask, humble yourself, and work within the society, the, the, the culture, the, the arena that God has put you in. If God wants you to go into a store and be a witness to someone, and that store requires you to wear a mask, in order for you to walk in obedience, you're gonna have to humble yourself to the protocols of that store and put on your mask. Or you're not going to be able to go where the Spirit leads you and be an effective witness in obedience to the Father. Um, another topic of debate right now are the vaccines that are coming out for COVID. Um, a lot of people are saying, well, I'm not going to take the vaccine. And I don't blame them for not wanting to. I, I believe that there are things um, ingredients within these vaccines that are harmful to our bodies. But if it is required for me to go to a foreign country and minister there by taking the vaccine, if God's called me to go there, it's my responsibility to be obedient unto the Father. Therefore, I will take the vaccine to go where the Father wants me to go. Now, if God is calling me to go there and I'm sure of it and I take that vaccine, I'm also trusting in God that that vaccine is not going to harm me in any way. So I'm going to overcome. So this is how we establish the kingdom through humility. It's only as we humble ourselves that we can lift up the name of Jesus. In order for me to reach down and lift something up, I have to first kneel down. So in Matthew 6, verse 33, Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Righteousness is being one with God. So if I seek His kingdom first, I'm trusting that he's accomplishing everything in my life that I need. He's, he's doing everything that he has promised me. I just have to humble myself to him. In the Lord's Prayer, for 2,000 years now, the church has been praying, Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Friends, I guarantee you, in heaven, nobody is rebelling against the king. But they are all submitted to him, they are obeying Him, and as a result of their positioning towards His name, they are experiencing the kingdom of heaven. As we do this on the earth, humble ourselves to His name and allow Him to be who He is, we will see the kingdom of God coming to us and being established in us. This is proven in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, when Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? It's realizing that I am desperate 
for Jesus. I am desperate for the Holy Spirit. I am desperate for the love of the Father to fill me. I am desperate to abide in Him and accomplish um, the, the purposes that He has for me here on the earth. So just to close this out, when we begin to walk in this humility and this submission to the Lord, we are then allowing ourselves to be discipled by the Holy Spirit. He is our teacher, He is our guide, He is our counselor. So Paul mentions a few times in the scriptures that we are ambassadors of heaven. We are ambassadors of Christ and we are ambassadors on this earth. What do ambassadors do? Ambassadors go into foreign lands on behalf of the ones in authority that sent them there. And they go into these foreign lands to have influence upon the society and upon the culture. As we walk in discipleship to the Holy Spirit, learning how to recognize His voice, learning how to submit to Him, learning how to obey Him, learning how to receive revelation and vision from Him, we begin to walk as disciples of the Holy Spirit. As we enter into higher levels of discipleship, we then gain the authority and the title of ambassadors. Not everybody is ambassadors for Christ. Yes, we can represent Christ. We can witness about Christ. Man, the day after I was born again, I was already testifying of, of His freedom, of His healing, of His salvation, of His love, but I wasn't an ambassador. I had to learn to be led by the Spirit, to walk in authority, to be, to be discipled by the Holy Spirit, and then I could become an ambassador. The key to beginning this journey is positioning ourselves to receive the Kingdom. Folks, as we experience the Kingdom of Heaven, we will then walk in the kingdom of God established within us. Friends, God is about to do something great in the nations. I just want to pray for you before I close today. Father in heaven, I just bless everyone that is watching and listening now. I bless them in the name of Jesus. I declare this day that your heart is free, your mind is free, your entire soul is free from the cares of this world, from the fears of this world, and you empty out that fear and make room for more love of the Father. Friend, just position yourself today to receive the love of the Father, and I bless you that Jesus will set you free and you will glorify Him in the earth. Amen.